The enactment begins. Enactments begin by first stating, reviewing what were the pre-established client goals for change that they were seeking. And you recall, you had met with the person individually before in an interview and have them point out, yeah, this is something I'd like to make a difference in my life. So they help you establish the goal. Now, in order to achieve that, what do we do next? We have to set up the first scene that the enactment will take place in or in which the enactment will occur. So the first scene that's set up might be going back to the time in their life where they actually lost a great sense of confidence because they were publicly shamed in front of a classroom when they were giving their poetry reading. People laughed. And for them, they want to recreate that scene and experience it differently, where they're actually seen, prized, and valued. Now, the scene is set. But to complete the scene, we need to select participants from the group that are in, with you to stand in and be the people in your life that were there during that enactment. So take the shaming experience in the classroom when you were in grade six. You're going to have two or three other students present. You'd probably have a teacher. And so you invite other participants. Will you be a teacher? Would you be one of my classmates? And if they agree, then they are brought in to assist the, uh, the facilitators in the group lead the scene. When ready, the participants are there, the lead person is ready to go, to go back and re-experience and reclaim the scene, it begins. So you'd say, what's the first thing you need to say or do? Well, for often what they would do when you initiate a scene, you might have them watch the double, because they uh, you always have a double. They have someone being you that would actually stand up and look like they're reading back then. And it will bring back reminders to you that's what happened. And so after that happens, what we would do is say, show us now, the other participants, what occurred. And so when they see what occurs, they begin to express the experience they're having at that moment. It reminds them that I was alone, I was autonomous, I didn't have any support, and it reminded me of being teased or ridiculed as a child, and I went silent. That's experiencing it. Now, what the leaders will do is say, can you then go back to other past memories where that happened as a result of that day in school where people laughed at you or made judgments that you'd go quiet? So they can see the connection, the therapeutic connection in the early trauma and how it plays out in their life now. Now, what we have to do to make it uh, more effective is to invite the double, which is the leads double, to step in and redo the whole event in the classroom differently this time. And they, the first person witnesses, it, and that's called a sculpture. So you sculpture the scene and you have someone, so where do they stand, who's in the classroom, where's the teacher, and then the, the person is asked, okay, let's watch this like a movie, be played out differently this time. So the leaders work very much closely with you to create a new or altered scene to give a new embodied memory that they will take away they never had before. And so in fact, what they would probably do is create the scene where the person reads, and instead of being ridiculed and teased, some of the students smile, and the teacher says, well done will invite you to do it again. And you can see right away, they experience a sense of being valued and feeling important rather than being shamed and feel they should run away. So after they experience that and the people pause and they talk about what they saw, what they're doing is really claiming the new embodied self through action. And that's what's very particular and unique about enactment. You don't talk about what you'd like to have happened, you relive it, what should have happened. We also then, to consolidate what they've learned, is get them to actually verbalize and say out loud, what are the new conceptualizations of self that they now actually feel in their body they never had before? And they might say, I actually feel proud for a moment. I never thought I'd feel proud. And so when I stand up and perform, I hope I would do that in the future. And that completes the enactment to this point. We end that session by inviting people to return to their seats and sit down after saying, I no longer am assuming a role for this person. I'm no longer his or her double. I'm no longer the teacher. I'm no longer the classmate. I am me now in the present. And that brings all the people back into the present time rather than going back in time to that classroom many years ago.
What makes the enactment process for change quite unique is that it goes beyond verbalizations or narrative or talking about my life or the individual's life, but primarily reliving and doing rather than talking. And then only they relive and do, they re-experience, they think differently, they feel differently, and as well, somatically, or we say the body sensation, we use the whole body to express new experiences that we have never really allowed ourselves to feel before because frequently we're frozen or we don't move. So it's a multi-system uh, method of change well beyond verbalizations. So all the systems of change are engaged in a group, in an action-based group. When we say it's the sensory motor means feeling, sensing, noticing. Next, the cognitive, that's thinking, imagining. And affective really means emotional. And in some cases, they call spiritual. That is, some people actually think that many of their experiences are influenced by things transcendent to things beyond us. And in particularly, people in other cultures value that particular aspect as well, to think about what's speaking to me outside of this world, as well as what's inside this world. So, when the person is invited to watch the enactment of their life, what they actually get to see is specific things about their life made explicit and observable, uh, they're thereby engaging themselves much more closely in who they are. They see themselves reflected or portrayed, enacted in a different way than they ever saw before. And when they see that, and when they're invited to step in and be that person and actually recreate what should have happened, they feel empowered because it becomes a part of their physical moving self. Because when they feel safe, they'll say, I think I would like to speak back to that person and ask them to just stop talking for a moment. I'm overwhelmed. And they never actually ever felt they could have permission to limit somebody. But when they get to do it with the support of others, they feel motivated and empowered, and they begin to think differently about themselves, or they have an emotional memory, gee, I can speak up. And I actually move my hand a little bit forward when I said, please wait. Or they might have an awareness of a dream for the first time that they never told anyone about. All of these go together, facilitating what we talk about, the therapeutic gains, for not only the member, but the people watching in the group. Many of them can identify with similar experiences of the person who's the focus of the group. Finally, you are very aware in this particular program that all of the therapeutic enactment takes place in a small group. In small groups, they first need to be created to be a place of structure, a place of support, of trust, and inclusion. And they become quite strong places of safety because people's trust levels go up. And in this way, the enactment becomes what, uh, as you heard, uh, Lee Schulman describes as community property. All the members in the group are there to help achieve the goals. They also help receive the benefits. So it's not one person who's experiencing the change, but frequently the group small group communities change by learning episodes which are very valuable to them as well. So it is not just the lead, what we call, or the, or the single key person, but it's others share the observations and insight of others that initiate potential change processes for many groups in their lives as well.